Hello learners, welcome to NIS studio. I am Dr. Anjana Agarwal talking on food and nutrition. Everybody eats food, but we need to understand what are the functions of food, what is food and what are nutrient and what is nutrition. Let us understand one by one. When we talk of food, it immediately concerns with the edibility or edible substance. So let us read the definition of food. Food is any edible substance that we eat or drink is obtained from plants or animal sources and primarily consumed to satisfy hunger and nourishment of the body. When we choose any food, first we see whether this food is tasty or not, whether it is socially acceptable and whether it also supports the psychological needs, whether I feel happy or I do not like that particular food. But when we deeply understand the functions of food, so we find that food is essential for growth and development, survival and maintenance of life, functioning of the vital organs and production of energy. In this case, we have divided the functions of food in three categories, social functions, physiological functions and psychological functions. Now we will understand what do we mean by these three types of functions of the food. Let us understand one by one. When we talk of the social functions, we directly relate this function of food is with the eating process along with the family members or friends or even if we go to somebody's place, that person host also asks for some kind of food and even the guest also expect that some kind of food or drink will be served. So sharing of food implies the social acceptance and food is a part of every festival, party or all types of social gathering big or large. When we talk of the psychological functions, we eat food not only to satisfy hunger, but we get satisfaction and it is a way to express our emotions. It may be love, it may be hate, it may be respect, it may be anger. Sometime you love the food, you eat the food and you discard that food because you do not want to eat that food or you do hate that person who is serving to you. So these are food becomes a medium to show the emotions and food may be served as a reward. Somebody is winning some game, you give the food. Some child is doing good, you give some food. Though it is not a very good practice to always encourage the child with the kind of food he likes and it becomes a kind of punishment also. In some places, even today, when somebody is not doing well, we cut down the food and that is a kind of punishment. And when somebody is sick, special kind of food is given to them not only to heal the person, but to calm down that person, to show that you are under care by giving the special food during sickness. The most important function of food in relation to the body is physiological function that mainly are energy giving, body building, regulating the body processes and providing the protection against diseases. In this picture, you will find variety of food. Here you can see the milk, bread, egg as a part of breakfast as an example. In next picture, you will see that how energy and human life are connected. 
so that vital body functions are carried out by the food you are eating. You get the energy for playing and you also need energy during rest. So food gives energy for vital body functions like breathing, eating, sleeping and also for different types of activities. Everybody wants to have a good body but certain kinds of foods are especially required that will provide the strength and maturation of the body. So in this picture you can see how a child is growing into the adulthood and that at every stage specific nutrients and specific foods are required. At every age you require specific foods in terms of specific nutrients for growth and development. Another purpose of food is a regulatory process as I just told you that it is required for vital functions and that vital function can be your heart breath, can be your digestion, can be your thinking. So brain needs constant supply of energy which comes from the food particularly the glucose which further regulates the thinking, heartbeat and digestion and other body functions. It provides the protection against the sickness or diseases. So variety of foods are needed in your diet that will help you to protect your body from various symptoms, diseases or deficiency disorder. This person may be feeling the cough, lightheadedness, vomiting, fainting but if this person might have eaten the good amount of food or balanced diet. Now we are frequently hearing about the word nutrition. Do you know what really means is the nutrition? Nutrition is not the food. Nutrition is the process by which food is taken in and utilized by the body. Let us understand how after eating the food, what is the process which basically utilized by the body and then only food gives all these function which you have read just now. So ingestion is a word which implies to the eating. So eating or ingestion of food, whatever you are eating, you may be eating chapati, you may be eating bread, you may be drinking some milk or anything. But after it reaches your stomach or then it gets digested in the body, in the stomach, small intestine, large intestine and digestion of different nutrients may start from the mouth itself. And after digestion, the nutrients, now the food is over. It remains the food till it is ingested. Then nutrients are absorbed by the body. Then it reaches to the different cells of the body where it is utilized. And then it provides the energy and whatever nutrients it required at different places of the body for different activities in that form body utilizes the food. Now let us understand again, after the food it is absorbed by the body performs many vital function which you have just now read. Now you try to connect all this you have understood, it provides energy, helps in body building, regulates the body processes and provides the protection against diseases. I'm Keep on talking about the body processes, vital processes. Vital means that which are essential for life. Vital processes means breathing, thinking, digestion, which you may not realize voluntarily or involuntarily. So some functions are volunteer, which you know it, and some are invisible which keeps on happening without your own realization. I am sitting here, but I am speaking, I am thinking and somewhat digestion is also taking place. Everything is going on, but I know that I am only talking. 
So, these are all vital activities of the body. Now, how this food is converted into the nutrient which the body utilizes? So, there is a new word nutrient. So, food contains variety of nutrients or useful substances we can say by which the food works for the body. Simple. If we technically define this word what are nutrients then we can say nutrients are invisible chemical compounds present in the food which helps to keep the body healthy. That is we all aim for. Now in this picture you are again seeing a man which is all composed of different types of food which will provide the nutrient and then the body will be in a position for various kind of activities. Some of the nutrients has to be obtained from the food and some the body can synthesize and body can only synthesize when all the substances from the food required for then synthesis is reached to the body. So, I will say body cannot synthesize all the nutrient thus need to be obtained from food because there are large number of nutrients which the body require for various kinds of functions. For that purpose, nutrients are largely divided into two categories, macronutrients and micronutrients. You will see the difference of only one letter at the second stage, M-A-C and M-I-C. It is very easy to remember, macronutrient and micronutrients. Let us understand what are they. When we talk of macronutrient, these are only three, carbohydrate, protein and fats. They are required in large quantity in terms of gram and they provide energy which we understand in the terms of calories and we write in nutrition small k c a l. It is very particular. So, do not confuse with the k cal or kilocalorie. In nutrition, it is written as small k c l, it means calories. We will talk micronutrients. These are needed in a small quantity and that small quantity can be in milligrams or micrograms and they do not provide any calories but they facilitate to obtain the calories from the macronutrients and largely we divide these micronutrients into two terms vitamins and minerals. Now we will understand the macronutrient one by one their functions, their food sources and if you do not get enough then what may happen. Now we will understand about the carbohydrates. Further we have divided for some specific purpose these carbohydrates into two categories. Available carbohydrates and unavailable carbohydrates which are also known as dietary fiber. I think many of us knows the word dietary fiber. Now we will understand about the available carbohydrates. This is directly related to the digestion. These carbohydrates are available in food in terms of starch or sugars and they are easily digested and provide calories to the body. But when we talk about unavailable carbohydrates or dietary fiber, they are not digested in our body, but they are not digested particularly in a small intestine where available carbohydrates are digested because the enzymes to digest these dietary fiber is not present there, but they directly reach to the large intestine 
where they function. But these type of carbohydrates do not provide calories and examples can be cellulose or hemicellulose. But they are very important. They not only add bulk to the stool and help in easy defecation process, but they also provide lot of protection against various diseases. When we talk of the functions of carbohydrate, we will mainly focus on few of them, main source of energy and one gram of carbohydrate provides four calories. They also spare proteins for bodybuilding functions. You will understand this function little later when we are talking of proteins. It add bulks to the diet. You eat so much of carbohydrate through rice, chapati and various other things. And if you get this much of it, then you will not feel satisfaction. So you get the satisfaction after eating the meal. And the food sources are cereals, which include wheat, rice, bajra, maize, etc. Pulses, rajma, chana, dal, etc. Roots and tubers, potatoes, sweet potato, beetroot, etc. And some amount is also present in other foods also like sugar, jaggery, they are pure carbohydrates. As I told you, it contains calories. One gram of carbohydrate gives four calories. And this is specifically shown here to give you an example how it is going inside your body because it is very, very important not only to get the energy to maintain the health, but it is also important for us to protect yourself from various kinds of diseases. So one teaspoon of sugar is pure carbohydrate and one teaspoon of sugar contain five grams of sugar and you will get 20 calories with one teaspoon of sugar. So you can easily calculate how much carbohydrate you are taking in and how much calories you are taking in by eating just one teaspoon of sugar. Now we'll talk about the proteins. Everybody knows that proteins are very good and they are needed for the body, bodybuilding. For all growth and development, without protein, we cannot do anything. Why? Because all the cells, tissues, organs, muscles, bones, even the teeth are made up of protein. And it is essential for growth, development and protection of the body. So, so much of functions. Now, how they function? Proteins are made up of several smaller units. And these smaller units are called amino acids. They are divided into two categories. See, I am dividing each macronutrient into various categories. So these protein categories or amino acids can be categorized into two essential amino acids and non-essential amino acids. There are eight amino acids which are categorized as essential amino acids. We only have to understand so when we use the word essential, that means they are not synthesized in our body. They have to be supplied from the food. When we talk of the non-essential amino acids, they are 12 in numbers, but our body can synthesize them as per the requirement of the body. Here we have to learn that as I told you little earlier also that these essential amino acids will be synthesized in the body only when other substances or substrate are available in the body from the food in sufficient quantity then only our body can synthesize. So we cannot ignore by consuming the essential amino acids. What are the functions of protein? As I told you earlier also, it is growth, maintenance and repair of the tissues. On a daily basis, we lose so many cells and we get repair also during rest. And we must understand that all the vital functions as I keep on telling you, 
are carried out by the enzymes, hormones, antibodies and other proteins like hemoglobin which carries the iron throughout your body and participate in oxygen carrying capacity and reach that oxygen inside the body. So, production of enzymes, hormones, antibodies and other proteins are essential and they are made up of proteins only. 1 gram of protein gives you 4 calories. I told you the sparing effect. Why? When enough carbohydrate or fat is available, then protein does its own function like providing the raw material for the hormones, antibodies, immunity, etc. But sufficient amount of carbohydrate or fat, if it is not there, then protein will do the work of energy for performing the vital function of the body. And you can get that protein from the animal sources like meat, poultry, fish, egg, milk, cheese, paneer, curd, etc. And you can also get the protein from vegetable sources like cereals, pulses, legumes, nuts and some vegetables like peas also contain the protein. Let us understand the animal proteins come from the meat, egg, milk, etc. And why we are talking of these two proteins? Especially because animal proteins contains all the essential amino acids. As I told you just now that there are essential amino acids and there are non-essential amino acids. And plant proteins lack one or the other amino acids. So, if they have to be combined, then only you will get the good quality of protein from the vegetable sources. As in Indian diet, we try to consume the rice and dal, chapati or dal. So, that becomes a good quality protein. There are many other functions of protein. Let us talk of the fats. We are focusing here in terms of the nutrient fat, not as a source of fat which we are consuming as such. Fat includes both fats and vegetable oils. Fats in general are solid in nature and generally obtained from animal sources like ghee. And vegetable oils are liquid in nature at room temperature and obtained from plant sources like oils. This also can be categorized from the basic unit of fat that is fatty acids and there are saturated fatty acids and unsaturated fatty acids. Mostly saturated fatty acids are found in solid fat for example butter, ghee etc. and unsaturated fatty acids are found in oils like vegetable oils and both are necessary for the vital functions but most of the time we should consume or focus on unsaturated fatty acids. When we talk of the functions of fats, first it is a concentrated source of energy. One gram of fat or oil provides 9 calories that is more than the double of the carbohydrate or protein. It reduces the use of proteins for energy purpose. It carries the fat soluble vitamins into the body and help in their absorption. And these fat soluble vitamins are A, D, E and K. It also helps in maintaining the body temperature. How? Because the layer of fat underneath the skin helps to conserve the body heat, acts as a cushion to the vital organs. Your vital organs can be your stomach, liver, heart, brain, etc. It helps in the growth of the tissues, adipose tissues, which are also known as fat cells 
and it is the only nutrient which can be stored in the body. Carbohydrate can be stored in limited amount and if they are consumed in excess amount then they will convert easily into the fat and store in the fat cell. When we are talking of fat they can be obtained from cooking oils, ghee or butter these are visible sources. You also like to eat fried foods that also gives enough amount of thing but there are some invisible fat which are present in oil seeds, nuts, even the meat, fish, eggs, milk, cheese etc. are also good sources of fat. You have understood about food, about nutrition, about nutrients and particularly the macronutrients, carbohydrate, protein and fat. In the next video we will talk about the micronutrients, vitamins and minerals at large. Thank you very much.